Welcome back to the extravaganza, ladies and gentlemen. My next guest is a very funny young comedian who's making his national television debut along with me here tonight. He's, he's played at clubs and colleges all over the country, and by the country I mean the United States, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and that's right. Uh, and that's why we're so delighted that he's here with us tonight. Please welcome <laughs> Rob Bartlett. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking Bartlett, because that's my name. You're thinking Bartlett, you're now, you're today, you're a happening kind of a guy. Why do you look like you just stepped off a wedding cake? The reason's very simple. I'm getting married at the end of September, and uh, I was kind of rushing around getting ready for the show today, and I also had to look for a tuxedo. I didn't really get a chance to have my fiance take a look at it, so uh, I wanted her to get a, an idea. What do you think? You know, I've been all over this great big world. I've been to Detroit. I've been to Cleveland. I've even been to Newark. Thank you, you're beautiful. And everywhere I go, people, they tell me the same thing. They say, Bartlett, because that's my name. I say, Bartlett, life is like the dentist's office. It's excruciatingly painful, but at least the music's nice. <laughs> Thank you, you're beautiful. Sometimes people come up to me and they say, Bartlett, because that's my name. <laughs> Bartlett, life is just a bowl of cheese. <laughs> Thank you, you're beautiful. <laughs> It was my grandmother's birthday last year, and... And she said to me, Debbie, because she's senile. And I said, Grandma, because that's her name. Boo! <laughs> Grandma's not having a birthday this year. But I'll be driving a BMW. Next week, my other grandmother with a pacemaker's coming over, and we just got a new microwave. <laughs> Going for a Jaguar this time. <laughs> Thank you, you're beautiful. I'd like to do an impression right now, which is skyrocketing me to start him. I started out in a small club right here in New York, known as the International House of Pickled Beets. <laughs> and this is the impression that got me here to the big time on the Dave Letterman Show. Ladies and gentlemen, a beagle at a cocktail party. Woof, 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 Back, 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 A chihuahua at a cocktail party. Mira la cosa que tienes mujer aquí, yo. Lucy! A boxer at a cocktail party. Adrian! Adrian! And last, but certainly not least, a black Labrador retriever at a cocktail party. Whoa! I say whoa! Well, bow wow your mama! Thanks a lot. Bartlett, very nice, sir. You're getting married, actually? Yeah, getting married uh, September 19th. And that would be the official dress of the day. This is the exact tuxedo that I will be wearing. Now, uh, let me just guess here. A rental? 
Yes. Yeah, what yes. does that go for? This, uh, I think, with tax is 6143 Not a bad deal. I thought so. Yeah. Uh, and what, somebody mentioned sneakers? Well, I couldn't arrange footwear, so uh, I knew the footwear <laughs> specialist was going to be on the show, but I did get color-coordinated <laughs> sneakers for they the look, occasion. They look very nice. Thank you. Now, uh, is, this, is this true that this is your first appearance on... First network appearance. Uh -huh. um, the, I was a finalist in the Big Laugh-Off competition, which has been taped for a cable network on Showtime. Yeah. And uh, that will be, actually, that's airing in September, so this is it. This so is actually the first television. First, and, yeah. But circle those TV guides for September. Yes. That's right. Yes. Um, <laughs> now, uh, what did you do before you got into uh, comedy here? Um, I had a variety of jobs. I, uh, out of college, I took a leave of absence from, from college and uh, worked as an elevator operator, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, which is very interesting. Uh, kind of a, a hiatus there for Yeah, you. kind of yeah. a hiatus. Uh -huh. uh, just time to kind of get my act together and chill out. And, yeah. Uh -huh. And... Uh, I ran an elevator for a while and uh, decided that comedy was it. And uh, from the elevator, that's where I went. Right now, you, uh, you work in a lot of clubs around this great land of ours. You yeah, I've been Detroit, been Newark, and on around Detroit, Newark, yeah. around the whole bit. And uh, yeah, matter of fact, tomorrow I leave to go to uh, Ocean City, Maryland. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> two people have gone to Ocean City, Maryland, uh, at a place called Gunning's Crab House, which is not where you would think comedy would be, but. Uh, Gunning's Crab House? Gunning's Crab House in Ocean City, Maryland. Mm -hmm. But it, it's a restaurant and... It's uh, a restaurant and they have comedy upstairs. Yeah. Uh, I think the bill is me, uh, another comedian, Larry Ragland, and uh, a stuffed flounder. Oh, that'd be, that'd be great. that would be great. So you must be, must be very excited. It's my first time working with seafood, so... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, how long have you been uh, doing stand-up comedy? Doing stand-up about four years. Yeah. Just about four years. Terrific. Well, you're off to a good start. I appreciate you Thank coming you. by tonight. Thank Mr. You Rob much. Bartlett, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Good luck with your uh, marriage. We'll be right back. Don't you worry. Thank you very much. Uh, we have to unplug this sucker. I want to thank my guest tonight, of course, Mr. Rob Bartlett. Very nice. Thank you for being here, Rob. Also, um, my thanks to Fran Leibowitz and, of course, to uh, Jerry Lopez, uh, Professor Howard Taylor, uh, Paul Schaefer in the band, ladies and gentlemen, Bill Wendell, our announcer, and you, the studio audience. Tomorrow night, director and screenwriter Paul Mazursky, spaceship viewer Timothy James, and comedian Marsha Warfield. Uh, that'll be tomorrow night. Thank you. Good night. This has been a Melman production. This guest is making his television debut tonight. He is a talented comedian, magician, and spy. It's a pleasure to welcome Joel Hodgson. Joel Hodgson, age 22, Minneapolis, Minnesota, white human starting now. All right, will you think of a card? Is this it? <laughs> That's not it? No. What was your card? Ace of diamonds. Ace of diamonds? <laughs> okay, this is as close as I could get. <laughs> How much time have I got left? Five minutes. 
Okay. I guess we've all got about five minutes. This is what we call in the magic fraternity a candle. What I'm going to do is make the candle change color, but as you all know, before the candle can really change color, he must first believe he can change color. And to do that, I'm going to bring a friend of mine out. Do you remember who we had out last week? Gang? Oh, I wasn't here. It's my good friend, the Lizard King, Jim Mo Godzilla. We have a little skit worked out for you. It's an excerpt from the film Godzilla vs. Megalon. <laughs> what is it, big fella? Dad? He's trapped? Under a rock? Down in Dead Rock Canyon? In Tokyo? Okay. okay. Now the Lizard King will scare the candle into believing he's a different color. Okay, to finish the process, I need you, the audience, to blow on the candle on the count of three. One, two, three, blow. <laughs> okay, since we blew on the candle, what color should it be? Since we blew on the candle, what color should it be? Okay, right. Now that I've established the color of the candle is blue, I snap my fingers and it's back to red again. <laughs> Oh, really, the candle's gone. <laughs> oh, sure, these two are a lot of fun to have around the house. But I like to race them. <laughs> okay. Oh, when Harry Houdini was alive, he did a trick that was known as the fake spirit seance. I'd like to recreate that now because Harry's dead. Okay, I've set a place for my ghost friends, um, some breakfast of ghost toasties and evaporated milk. <laughs> Hope this works. <laughs> of course, Harry didn't have a microphone to use like I do, but the same thing can happen if you're not... <laughs> Okay, the same thing can happen if you're not Okay, are you getting any of this? Okay, it's not that big of a deal. Why would somebody do a trick with three hands? Well, I've got three hands. Thank you out of all my audiences. I'd have to say you've been the most recent. I understand in addition to your um, many talents uh, displayed, what's the matter? Nothing. Uh, I understand that you uh, are also a ventriloquist. Right. <laughs> Oh, you know? Hey, it's my good friend Danny O'Danny. 
Danny loves the minuet, the ballet rouge and crepe Suzette. But Danny loves to rock and roll, a hot dog makes him lose control. What a wild duet when dummies, identical dummies, are connected by the spine. A genealogist could lose his mind because they're dummies, but they're cousins and they're connected by this spine. <laughs> Ebony and Ivory Very nice. Tell you what, uh, Joel, we're going to go away for a commercial, but we'll be right back. Joel, Folks, we're done. I want to thank you, the studio audience. You were terrific as always. Mr. Joel Hodgson, my thanks to you, sir. Peter Riegert, Monique Van Voren, and her shoes. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul and the band tomorrow, Jane Pauley, Billy Crystal, and staff writer and crime fighter George Meyer. Good night. <laughs>
Just say, hey, I was just playing hockey. <laughs> It is. It's a violent world. It really is. Uh, perfect example. Did you know you can now take out life insurance policies for your pets? It's true. I have a friend in, in uh, Minnesota named Patrick. Took out a $1,000 policy on his cat. Next day, the cat mysteriously died. <laughs> it's true. And the insurance company sent him a check for $1,000. See, I might have asked a few questions. Like, where did the cat get the little revolver? In the first place. <laughs> Come on. Who bought the bullets? Use simple logic. The cat was shot in the left temple. We all know he was right, Pod. <laughs> What's going on? You're, good. You're in a good mood. A lot of single people here tonight? Single people? Yeah. 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 The happy people, yeah. I'm single. I really think single people are discriminated against. It's true. The worst offenders are maitre d'oeuvres in restaurants because they always make you feel stupid if you eat by yourself. Now you go in. I'd like a table for one, please. And he goes, <laughs> A table for one. Well, follow me, Mr. Popular. <laughs> hey, thank you very much. Thank you. We'll be right back, folks. David Wood. Thank you very much, folks. We're out of time. I want to thank everybody who was here. Kenneth Mars, of course, all of our cat owners, Joan Foster, Ellen Weiss, Donna Jean Thompson, Elizabeth Nero, Bill Canagata, uh, our announcer, Bill Wendell, of course, Paul Schaefer and the uh, orchestra. Uh, Monday, uh, Fran Leibowitz will be here, David Fuhrer, the man who sings backwards, and uh, the passenger from Eastern Flight 855, the adventure flight. Uh, Sandy Dix will be joining us. David, thank you very much, and you're going to be where? I'll be at the Comedy Underground in Seattle, May 25th, and the Laugh Factory in Detroit, uh, June 8th. Okay, nice to have you here. Thank you very Thanks much. Nice job. Have a good weekend, folks. Good night. Next guest is one of the strangest comedians that we have seen in a long while. He works regularly at the Comedy Connection in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, also at the Comic Strip right here in New York City, making his network television debut this evening. Please welcome Mr. Bob Goldthwaite. Bob. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. It feels good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, hey, thank you very much. It feels real good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It feels real good to be here tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I saw that. Hey, hey, Ronald, Ronald. Ronald, ah, 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 ah. Ronald Reagan is so old. Ronald, this is, this is a joke. <laughs> Ronald Reagan's so old when, when he's, he's so old, he's got, he's got jelly beans in his face. I don't get it. No. Thank you very, thank you very, thank you very, oh! My mama had a baby and it's had popped off. Thank you very, no. Hey, hey, but seriously, I'm only 19 years old and I would like to meet Jacqueline Bissett. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm a damn near right. It feels real good, it feels, it feels real good to be here tonight. What, what's my hair doing? <laughs> my hair's got a mind of its own. Sometimes I let it drive. <laughs> I saw Gandhi. Gandhi was a really good film. I thought it would have been a. I thought it would have been a. I thought. A, ah, I've never in my life. No. I, I want him to think that the 
vertical holes messed up. <laughs> remember making, remember making shampoo horns? <laughs> I got a new manager, Reuben Kincaid. <laughs> People have been so nice to me in New York. People have been. Ah! Do you know what that is? Do you know, do you know what that is? Do you know what that is? No, no, no. I don't know. But it kept me out of the army. My wife is so. My wife is. I had a bad week. I don't. I don't. I don't, don't want to be here. I lost my job. I lost my job. No, wait, wait, I didn't wait, I didn't really lose my job. I mean, I know, I know where it is still. Just when I go there, there's this new guy doing it. This is kind of, this is kind of, this is kind of a, ah! This is kind of a funny story. Because I was cashing a check the other night. And they gave me more money than I wanted. People in New York have been so friendly because, because people I don't even know. I've just been walking down the street here in New York and, and people have been so friendly. I, I didn't, I felt, because I had a bad day and I was very depressed. And this man I didn't even know came up to me and he said, Hey, buddy, you got a problem? And he made me feel good because he was concerned about my day. My father's, right now my father's rolling over in the grave. That's because he wasn't quite dead when we buried him. <laughs> hey, look, 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 uh, MTV, and I ran, I ran so far away. Like a Nimrod. My wife is so, my wife is so, my wife is so fast. Wait, she's real fast. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't got. I don't got a joke for everything. <laughs> she's so. She's so fat. When she puts makeup on, she looks like a subway train. <laughs> I'm on a roll. Take that light chicken. I know that. Take that light chicken. Take that light chicken. I know that. That ain't a joke. You don't even know what I'm talking about. Have you ever been over to someone's house and they go, and they go, and they want you to eat some sort of meat that you've never eaten before in your life? And they go, here, try this. And I go, no. They go, try weasel. I go, no. They go, take the leg chicken. Take the leg chicken. I go, give me some chicken. Hey, look, I'm the Pope. <laughs> Don't make babies. Big holiday went by, Groundhog's Day. Let's give chipmunks their own holiday. Why not Weasel Day? I'm looking for roommates. <laughs> if I didn't make you laugh, I hope at least you talk about me and work tomorrow. <laughs> Good night. I'm okay. I'm, uh, I'm okay. Thank you for having me on the show very much. Thank you for being here. Do you, uh, do you have uh, trouble uh, relaxing or unwinding after? Uh... No. You want to go out? You want to go? You and me? We, we, we go bowling? You and me? Yeah. Yeah. We'll do that. We'll go bowling. Will we? I'm going bowling with David Letterman. My mother's going to be really happy. <laughs> you and me are a lot of like lean party. Yeah. That'll be fun. Probably... I like I like I, I paint. I paint. This is some this is some paintings I did. Can you see this? Can you see this? Yeah. Not hold, you. Hold Wait. them up right over there. This one here? Yeah. This is my house. Thank you very, thank you very much. And this is my cat. This is my cat. This is my cat, Al. Thank you very much. This is my cat, Al. After this is this is after my father hit him with a lawnmower. And and. 
and I made one for you. Oh, you made one for me? All right, let's this see is, that quickly, Bob. Okay, okay, real quick. This is like, this is for tonight. See, can you see? This is, this is Barry and Dave Pals. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice, Bob. Uh, well, we'll be right back. Uh, we're very right. Tonight is a comedian. Uh, this gentleman will be working at a club in uh, Boston called Ding Hose. So call Ticketron immediately. He appears regularly in New York here at Catch a Rising Star. And tonight, this will be his network television debut. We're mighty happy to have him with us. Please welcome Kenny Rogerson. Kenny! <laughs> well, good evening. How is everyone? Okay, great. Very excited to be here in the giant Star Wars bar of America in New York City. It's very exciting. Uh, you looking forward to winter? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to try uh, skiing again this winter. Do you ski? Yeah. Do you, are you good at it? Yeah. I'm terrible. I, I can't do a few of the basic things, like stopping is a, is a problem, <laughs> which you should know how to do. I, I, I basically believe tuck and go. You know, carry the, the poles with the tips facing forward. People will move out of your way. It's... A, <laughs> It's embarrassing to go skiing your first time because you look like you're trying out new legs. You know, it's like, well, if I don't snap a femur, it'll be a good day, you know. <laughs> Little kids, eight, nine years old, whipping by you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, come by me again, Sonny. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be a little harder with the jacket on fire, won't it? <laughs> you know, and they have all this equipment on skiing equipment that I don't understand. They have straps. So when you fall, you can't totally lose the poles. And they have straps, so when you fall, you can't totally lose the skis. And, you know, when you fall, you don't want this stuff anywhere near you. You're, <laughs> you're plummeting down a mountain. You come to, you got wooden metals sticking out of everywhere. <laughs> well, we're hemorrhaging, but we saved the K2s. You know. <laughs> it was a good run. <laughs> they have those little round things on the pole near the tip. The only thing I can figure those are for, so when you fall on the tip, it'll only go in so deep. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's all safety, you know, all safety. The only time I went skiing, I took the girl I was going about five or six years ago. We were out there, uh, it's like 20, 30 bucks for lift tickets. We're out there 10 minutes. She goes, I'm cold. Let's go in. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> I said, not until you're frozen solid, honey. <laughs> then I'm wrapping a rope around your head, riding you down like a toboggan. <laughs> oh, yeah. I get my money's worth out of this. I, I had a fairly bizarre summer of very strange occurrences. I was walking along the beach. I see this guy swimming about 50 or 300 yards out. And, you know, he's yelling, help, help, help. And I don't know if he meant me or not, you know. <laughs> I guess not, because he stopped after a while. <laughs> Speak up, don't hide underwater, you know. They want to be saved, yet they hide underwater, you know. <laughs> People are funny. <laughs> and yesterday, I was bowling with my little brother, and he kept getting stuck in the ball return. You know? <laughs> Keep your head down, Billy, I cried. <laughs> Kids don't want to learn, you know. <laughs> then last Thursday, I come home. There's an ambulance outside my house. They're loading a body in, you know, and I walk up to the cop at the door. I said, may I ask what's going on here, please? He says, uh, looks like your girlfriend committed suicide. I said, great, you know. <laughs> right before the weekend, you know. <laughs> Some people are in it for themselves, aren't they? So I get on the morgue to identify the body, and they pull back the sheet, and I said, yes, that's her, and all of a sudden, the morgue guy starts to laugh. I said, may I ask, what is so humorous? All of a sudden, the lights come on, she pops up, she goes, surprise, happy birthday. <laughs> oh, I couldn't believe I fell for that two years in a row. <laughs> Good party, though. You know, we had a lot of fun down there. Went skydiving this summer. Has anyone tried that? Yeah. Did you? Did you have to wear a helmet? No. 
You should have. <laughs> I could, no, I didn't want to wear the helmet. It was very hot. I told the man at the place, I said, I do not want to wear the helmet. He said, you have to wear the helmet. I said, why? I'm jumping out of a plane. I don't think a helmet's going to save a lot. You, know? <laughs> you land on your feet, they wind up about here. <laughs> Guess it's easier for them to just pick up the helmet, toss it in the truck. Oh, well, they got another one. Oh. Went to the movies today. I saw a remake of a great film uh, in 1974 with Faye Dunaway, The Eyes of Laura Mars. Okay, it wasn't a great film, but um, uh, the remake's even better. It stars uh, Mary Tyler Moore. It's called The Eyes of Laura Petrie. And uh, it's about a woman who murders people by pushing an ottoman in the way, and they trip over it and snap their neck. <laughs> Very eerie music, you know, right before they push it in front of the guy. It's like, na na na, na na na, na 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 I want to thank you for having me here. I had a great time. Thanks a lot. Thank <laughs> you.